hello again and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is noye and i'm a nigerian teacher i live and work in lagos nigeria thank you for finding time to click on my video if you're new here let me be the first to say welcome to my youtube channel and if you're a returning subscriber i'm super excited that you're here again to watch my content i love you for always coming back to watch my content so i'm filming in a castle you know this is a very different video it's more like a rant and an update you've seen the title already i've had questions that people have asked me and i want to come here right and I address them including questions that has to do with me quitting teaching and all of those information if something that you're interested in I'd like you to please keep watching <music> Okay, so the first thing I'd like to address is about school reopening in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria especially. The governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, okay, I used to mix him up with Mr. Babatunde Rajifashala. Okay, so Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, the current governor of Lagos State at that today, 2020, came up uh, to address it that on the 21st of September, primary and secondary schools will be resuming tentatively in other words he says it's not going to be cast on stone so guidelines have been given out to teachers out to schools i beg your pardon on how they're supposed to resume and what they're expected to do expectations that they're all supposed to meet so that they can all um resume okay so a lot of people have read this guideline some says it's too long some says that they cannot meet it some say it's not feasible you know but then that schools would resume tentatively so as at the time of this video i cannot tell if schools will fully resume or not but as at the time of making this video the information that we have is that schools will be resuming tentatively on the 21st of september okay that being said on the 3rd of september the federal government also came up with a declaration that schools can now fully be open in lagos and then some people came up with different posts to say that this uh covid or pandemic is not yet at the ground level in nigeria and um if you're reopening schools what are you going to put in place how are you going to manage situations how are schools going to manage it what are some of the things that would be put in place should the child have it in school and it's teachers are affected or another child is affected what's going to happen when you face the harsh and true reality of somebody getting it or something like that but i don't know it's um everyone is just um talking and giving their reactions and opinion twitter has also gone ahead agog with the hashtag school reopening and all of that and a lot of people are still worried in lagos state some schools have come out to say that they're not even resuming online i'm sorry they're not resuming on site right that they're going to be teaching online and they see what it looks like after this term and then resume fully in january so today is september 4th 2020 we actually attended a meeting organized by the ministry of establishment and teachers across lagos state were in attendance and a lot of people ask a lot of questions some people ask questions like are we in third term are we going to resume third term or are we going to start first term or how is the structure going to be like and then i remember one of the panelists answered by saying that we do not even have to stress ourselves about going to the past the government has already said that we went prepared to now resuming third term so if we're starting or starting something new i did not want to put a peg or put any um plague or any school to say okay this is what you should do with yourself but for me the, the answer was not really straightforward but they were just saying that they're going to test the children as soon as they come in so that you know the level that they are in and then know how to position or place all of them in their classes so people wanted to know whether we're starting okay first term this is first term or is it third term well let's know what term it is that we're starting i later learned that they're going to still have another meeting to deliberate to come up with um concrete information but part but for now people are not supposed to come come up with any information people are not supposed to take any information that they get online especially the false ones that are being passed around like the calendar of activities that some people found um everywhere on whatsapp or online some people are already putting out calendar to say that this is the calendar of activities for school resumption and a lot of people are like where did they get that information from and legal state came out again on their website to say that this is not from them on twitter actually to say that this is not from them they did not put out this they don't know where it's coming from and people should not follow that another thing they talked about was about 
children who will wear masks at what age should wear masks who should wear masks who should not wear masks you know and then they talked about the content of wearing masks even for adults some people even find it difficult to breathe while wearing masks especially for a long time so they said that okay maybe children between less than eight should not wear masks and some people are like what are they going to now do to those children are they going to use face shield and the doctor that responded said that face shield is not part of the guidelines that was given for prevention of covid 19 but the use of face masks was one of the modalities that was given out so a lot of people just got stuck there okay what happens to children in the nursery section what happens to children in the pre-primary school what is the plan for them you know and because they're also low standard private schools i've explained that before in my video that this that the private school in nigeria has different from different format you have a one room private school and they have an international standards private school and they're both private schools run by individuals so you know and the children that attend these schools are nigerian children of course the children of the rich and then the children of the poor of, of all children of the less privileged as it were so it's not really balanced in my opinion it's not like in a country where the educational system is so structured that the schools are either maybe more of public or and directed and governed purely by the government that's is very usually easy to control or like where you have a small room where it's the school and then you have a very standard school and it's still a school so some of people said that the guideline for resumption is not even feasible in nigeria and what are they talking about some people don't understand it some people have not read it some people have not seen it. some people have only heard that there's a guideline some people said that it's too much to read and they cannot um they cannot just take their time to read it some that have read it said that it is not just feasible they cannot meet up to that standard so if you're giving us a particular guideline to follow we do not know how we're going to miss this guideline so why are you not asking us to resume when we're not even sure of the modality that we're going to follow or what is going to be put in place for us to meet these guidelines so some people are just thrown here and there but then some of the panelists also said that you can have like a shattered or scattered um, arrangement where you can have an outdoor class or some children come today some children don't come uh, the other day is for me i just couldn't pick so, uh, the answer from from that particular panel then another thing that i found that another question that somebody asked was that some schools have even convert some school owners have converted their schools into porches into farmlands into maybe warehouse where they can bring in their goods and they have been doing that for like four three to four months or there about what happens to those people and they're like well that's for those the school owners to decide if they want to continue as school owners to run a school then they want to continue but if they don't want to then they have to mind their businesses or whatever they have to do that's their way they do you do you and then there was concern about teachers some teachers i mean not resume some teachers during this pandemic have found something else to do you know some people have decided to go into other things some have gone into other training some have gone to learn to do certain other things some have gone into businesses some sell stores some have even gone into farming some have gone into a whole lot of things and then they are beginning to find themselves in these things that they've gone into now schools are resuming a lot of them don't want to hand, hang up or leave these things that they have actually started to now resume school and then go back into school fully and it's going to be very overwhelming for some people some people have reached out to me to me say how are they going to cope they don't even know they have mixed feelings they, they are not sure whether to quit what they're currently doing now and then return to the classroom they don't know what their the salaries will be like they don't know what the fees will be like and they're kind of confused all over the place some people currently earn what they used to earn as um and more than what they used to earn when they were teaching in the classroom i can shock you I've, let me not shock you that teachers will earn like 40 dollars that's about fifteen thousand. some earn less than some earn like ten thousand naira, right which is of course lends less than thirty dollars that's what some teachers and of course there are teachers who earn like five hundred dollars but you have be hard to be hard for you to see teachers who earn like a thousand dollars yes very hard take it from me take it to the bank it's hard there are but then it's hard and that's the truth but then some of them have taken time to do other things for themselves now the question is are they going to abandon what they have done for themselves or what they have started for themselves and then return to the classroom and then continue to earn their amigo fair or they do not even know their stand concerning what the situation really is now
some are beginning to even enjoy where they're doing you know wake up at your own time do you enjoy yourself and now you have to quit all of that and then return to the classroom so the question is really like what's the way forward what are teachers going to do now what are teachers who have gone into the state of depression what are they going to do some teachers have not even found things to do but they're not sure whether they want to still come back to the classroom you know but then some teachers are prepared like okay anyhow we're still going back to the classroom whatever the guidelines whatever the school has planned then they're going back to this classroom some schools are saying that they're not even going to resume on site they're going to just be online okay so a lot of things are just coming up and flying here and then but we're just keeping our fingers crossed i'm also keeping my fingers crossed okay the question that i received was that have i have i quit teaching have i stopped teaching would i stop teaching would i resume will you teach will you go into side hustle will you continue to do what you have been doing prior to now all right i i haven't really quit teaching well but i haven't quit teaching i'm still in in, in the profession i have something on the side that i do to kind of support myself but i'm still teaching has that answered your question yes okay well i'm not too sure about me quitting teaching or not quitting teaching but let me just tell you what my routine is like from mondays to friday i wake up at 3 a.m can i say that again i wake up at 3 a.m i leave home at 4 a.m on the days where i wake up late i leave home like 4 30 to 5 and then when i go out late 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 maybe 5 a.m i leave home and then on days when i do not make it i have to take my maybe do the money rush take my children to the school and then go by boat and going by boat is kind of expensive it's not something really affordable so i usually have to go by land right so but if i have to go by boat i know that okay on those days i cannot make it or maybe i woke up and then i one of my children had fever and then i couldn't just get up and start going i want to monitor the child's health to be sure that the child is fine to be sure that everything is okay with the child before i get to leave from so on those days i bought boats right to work and believe me this pattern has been like that for 10 years <sighs> for 10 years yeah waking up at 3 a.m leaving from at 4 or 4 20 whatever before i before i got married when i got married after i got married when i had my children i've been doing that and i've set a target for myself to for when i'm going to just quit doing that yes there has to be time there has to be target i'm not getting younger I, of course i'm also worried about my health i understand the concerns of my friends a lot of people are reaching out to me to say come on this is suicidal what's wrong with you can you be getting by 3 a.m another question i came was so when do you go to bed and i like, do i go to it okay maybe I, I i sleep off i just sleep off kind of even though i have a planner that is very structured on how i run my day but sometimes my day run runs me especially if the children something happens to, to a child or a child needs has attention needs attention what do i do i do not have a nanny to help me fill in the gap to say okay maybe nanny go and look at that child just be sure that that's fine child is fine and then get back to me or something like that i do not have that the only person who is my strong support system right now is my husband who has been very supportive honestly that's the reason why i'm still put together take it to the bank that's the reason why i'm still like this why i'm still saying why i'm still put together because we're in this together and we're rocking and rolling everything together there's nothing like you're the husband you're the wife we're just like into it together so sometimes we don't like separate um duties or activities we just know that we're in this together so he does the morning runs while i do the evening runs right so you take the students to school i take them bring them back from from school that's how i've been working and rolling and managing everything and then putting everything in order it's been crazy it's been honestly but if you have a strong support system like one of my friend marina would always say that if you have a strong support system then you'll be able to fly you'll be able to carry on even when you're tired or weary that support system would always give you a shoulder to hang on and, and that's how i've been coping and managing and surviving as a nigerian who is a, in nigeria living in lagos and believe me sometimes in lagos state at 4 a.m or 5 a.m traffic has started and there's this roller coaster hosting and busting everyone is trying to get back to work everybody's trying to get up early everybody's trying to beat the traffic everyone wants to get to work as at when do and now as at the record time of recording of this video september 4th the third million bridge is still on i'm going through some uh work and you know we don't know i don't know when that's going to be over and then there's still a kind of construction going on in the area where i live so there's been traffic here and there and we're just trying to manage access and manage the situation right about now it's really not been easy but we will go through there are days when if you leave home at 5 a.m you may not get to work until 10 a.m if you get stuck on top of bridge so it's usually very wise or safe to leave very early except if you want to do the option of both because i live on the inland i've structured lagos into three parts the island the mainland and the inland okay 
for those of you that know where the island is of course that's after the bridge the third Milan bridge the gold bridge the Qatar bridge that you know that you found yourself out after the bridge on the island but for those on the mainland you know yourself Suriliru, Jueleg, Bamushin, Yaba, Zabo those in the middle and the central part of Lagos those are the people on the mainland inclusive of Ikeja but those on the inland are those that are further away on the outskirts of Lagos and around, around the borders of Lagos these are the people who are already leaving Lagos to another state or leaving Lagos to another country and so these are the people in places like Badagri, Ikorodu, Songo, Mowe, Bafo and all of those environs that have to that have to do with like your living Lagos so these are the people on the inland so if you live on the inland and you walk on the island then you have to leave home very early so you're going to get stuck in traffic and if you don't leave home very early you're going to get to work very late so a better part of your day, day is already used up on the road so how many hours do you have to work at do you have to work and if you leave work late you may still spend that same hour on the road now imagine doing four hours going to work and another four hours coming back that's the full eight hours in one day just on the road and that's how some people live their life in lagos monday to friday there's some people who have the alternatives of having to stay back at work and then go home later but some people don't have that opportunity but those who have the opportunity do that if they have spaces of people around and i know people who also sleep sleep in their cars or in the vehicles so that they can just find themselves the next morning brush their teeth take a shower wherever they find or around the way they work and then they find themselves back at work it's kind of a very crazy life in in lagos but a lot of people are just managing the situation but then some for some people it's not as stressful as it is for some others but an average lagosian goes through this very basic lagos stress so now that there has been serious issues with traffic on the road now the schools are resuming students will come and join the traffic believe me more cars will come out of the road because some parents would not want their children to board public vehicles so they would want their children to board private vehicles so more cars more vehicles will join the road and usually in lagos when students resume there's usually traffic and when students are at home the traffic reduces now interestingly we're going to be having issues with traffic we're going to be having more issues with traffic because it has always been a pattern for those who understand how lagos has been and for those who have been in lagos for a bit of a while you can tell that there's usually traffic more traffic when children resume now children are going to be resuming how are we going to cope another thing some people are talking about is with the transport fare now for those who are not going to be going with their vehicle sometimes i used to go with my vehicle but i realized that the stress was so much and it was going to kill me and i told myself you just have to stop doing this and then i quit using my car and then started going by public um, vehicles right now public vehicles have increased their prices double the price so are you going to work with the same salary that you earn and then still go to work every day how are you going to cope as a teacher how are you going to cope so a lot of people are worried how are they going to cope right financially if they have to now live on the same salary with increased transport fare how are you going to cope how are you going to keep going every day how are you going to keep managing yourself how are you going to keep managing with going to work every time and spending more money so some people said okay let them just give it a try this time and see how it goes from now to december if it works for them then fine they would continue but if otherwise then they may have to look for alternatives to what they're going to do so that these are some of the updates that i have concerning schools and resumption in lagos and i hope this video makes sense to you i don't know if this video is going to be too long but if it is long I, I apologize then the last thing i want to talk about is that my channel is going to have a name change yes i'm going to be bearing my name on this channel for the meantime um i'm going to have my name so that people can relate with me first of all as my name balogun before they relate with me as the excellent teacher so if you see that balogun popping up on your screen it's still me thank you so much for understanding that and thank you thank you for checking out on me thank you for your patience thank you for your time thank you for supporting my content i'm super grateful and excited at the same time i see you when i see you i love you all please stay safe stay blessed be kind i'll see you in the comment section like my video at the end so that more people can get to watch it and then share this content so that a lot of people can still get to watch this video also like come your way in another video it's me signing out and saying be safe and be blessed bye if you are new to my channel click on the subscribe button tap on the notification bell like it comment and share thank you